What do you know about money? Money has three basic definitions. It's a measure of value, a means of exchange, and a way to store wealth. Money in the form of cash or blips on computer screens can be instantly transformed into a bewildering array of financial instruments of varying complexity, but it's still all money. But where does money come from in the first place? How is it created? And how is its flow managed? Let's imagine you're digging around in your back garden and you find a whacking great diamond. You sell it and you make a million bucks. But even though the diamond just dropped out of nowhere, that million bucks is not new money. It's just transferring old money from one hand to another. And it does not bring new money into the financial system. And hang on a second, not so fast, salary man. Your wages aren't creating new money either. Not unless you're being paid with money that's been borrowed. Earning money is simply not the same as creating money. Because money is actually created through debt. Every new loan creates new money. For instance, when credit card purchases are made, they represent debt to the shopper. But even though this is borrowed money, it's real cash to the business owner, which he can now deposit in his bank account. This is real money which his bank will lend out to someone who will make another purchase. And then that money can be redeposited in another bank, and so on and so on. This is not an endless cycle, however, because banks don't lend out all the money they have on deposit. They have a reserve which they keep either in their own vaults as cash or in an account with the central bank. When the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie, that's amore. This is the reserve banking system also known as fractional reserve banking. To illustrate, working to a 10% reserve requirement means that out of an initial $100, 90 can be lent out. And when that 90 is later deposited, 81 can be lent, and so on to the last dollar. If you add up all these loans, they come to $1,000 in new money created from $100 deposited. Logically enough, this gearing up is called the multiplier effect, and it gives a lot of leverage with which to manage money flow. Too much of a good thing is, of course, a bad thing, and too much money in an economy will cause prices to rise and actually lower spending power. Just as the human body has to evaporate sweat to lower its temperature, so the economy needs to evaporate money to lower inflation. Each nation's central bank has various tools at its disposal to shrink or expand the amount of money it has in circulation. It can adjust the reserve ratio, raising the reserve requirement to say 20% from 10 would decrease its inverse, the multiplier, from 10 times to 5 times. More commonly, central banks use the very short-term interest rate to change the pace of money growth. If they feel the economy needs a boost, they will lower this rate to stimulate borrowing and create more cash. But if they feel the economy is running too hot, they can chill it down by raising the interest rate to discourage more debt and more money. And thanks to the multiplier, a relatively small move in the interest rate can have a disproportionately large effect on the supply of money. 
Lastly, but most frequently, central bankers use moral suasion, which means influencing the market with persuasive words. The common term is jawboning. Reserve banking works because it offers a highly elastic mechanism for creating and adjusting growth in modern growing economies. Money in this system has no intrinsic value. It's called fiat money. Let this be money simply by declaring it so. Unlike the gold and silver coins used in the past, today's banknote isn't really worth the paper it's printed on. And that's nothing to worry about. Cash notes and bank deposits are part of a notional tabulation, a system of tokens which represents a working belief system. A belief in reserve banking. Reserve banking, in turn, relies on human innovation and entrepreneurship to engage economic growth. Real wealth, for society as a whole, is created by man's infinite capacity to produce new ideas, services, and products, and not on the random chance of finding a diamond in your back garden. <laughs>